G'day. I'm going to do a bit of a quick tear down on this timer here. Um, I think it's had a fall. These pens are all sloppy. Uh, this one won't be going back into service anyway. Um, you see straight away they use these little tri wings uh, type bits there. It's just one, uh, a digital uh, timer control for a 10 amp point. That's an Australian plug. So, let's get the old row over here. Let's see if we can find out what's actually in it. I think I've had one of these apart before. There should be a battery in it um, or a capacitor because <coughs> this here maintains the time display for quite a while after the power's been disabled or turned off. So it always remembers what you do even if there's a power out. And which also means it keeps time quite well, unlike the mechanical ones, which as soon as the power drops out, uh, you have to go back around and set them up again. So that was quick and easy. Yeah, I've definitely destroyed it. So that's come off from there somewhere. So what we've got, we'll start in here, I think. Is this easy try wings or are they... No, they're little baby Phillips. We've got to get my screwdriver. We've got Mr. Phillip. It's a really small one. Just undo these. I expect just a basic display and buttons in it. This one will be in the bin once I'm finished. Okay. Well, that's just an empty case now. Soft rubber dome buttons. A little carbon pressy type stuff. Presses on the on these pads. There's the LCD driver. Also, I think that's got the time clock built into it because it's a little clock crystal on it. So that's all one piece. There's your display unit. Just a simple LCD using a zebra strip to contact to the main board. That pretty much just popped off the board. So it's just using the friction between the screws holding this down to the plastic case. But yeah, that's just a simple LCD. Lots of fun. <clears throat> Alright, fun side of things. Alright, so my earth pin's already buggered off. So yeah, that wasn't too safe. Just undo these screws here. Interesting, they're only using two screws to hold it in instead of all four. So they're not expecting it to deal with a lot of vibrations and things. It's a wee bit rough. Put that over there. Oh, it's just a bit hard to see in the dim light there. Oh, in plastic case, drawn. So these are some these would be somewhat universal I'm assuming because you've got um, you know you replace that plastic plate there and that front that front bit there just snaps out. Oh yeah that front bit there just snaps out there see so yeah, the, these would be universal, so they'd make, manufacture them for, different, uh, for a whole bunch of different countries. And then just put the insert in to suit the market it's going into, see? So that's like that, that's like that. <coughs> now this one will be for 240, well, I'm assuming for 240 only, uh, as it is. Though I believe the circuitry could probably handle the 110 anyway, I'm not going to try. Um, it's just what goes here and here. Interesting. Love mass production like that, eh? Uh, they're the pin grabbers. So when you put your plug in, it just slots straight into there. Um, these go a bit sloppy over time, especially if you put too much current through them. They just heat up and they just stop working. Uh, and you get a bit of a loose fit. So what else we got? We've got... Out of the road. Right. 
We've got a little, a little uh, ceramic fuse, <coughs> shatterproof. Is it soldered? I do believe that's soldered in place. Okay, basic resistor. Um, that would be an opto isolator. You have a really, really small battery. So what are they doing for current control for that? Oh, more circuitry on the other side. Okay, cool. It's not a lot to it, eh? Um, that there would be just the, that's just the power supply to keep this display charged uh, and running, or well, the whole board for that. It's all this. Uh, so that's all self-contained. It just needs power to work. Um, in fact, that's just that'd be a 1.2 volt um, nickel metal, I'd assume. Let's get that out of there. Now, when these have been left out for a long time, they take quite a while to come back up when you first plug it in. Which leads me to believe they live off this battery, um, which has to get charged first before it will run. Um, it can take up to 10, 20 minutes to come back alive. So that is a... That's a 1.2... Yeah, it's a nickel metal hydride. Uh, 1.2 volt, 40 milliamp. Little nickel metal battery there. That's pretty cool. Get rid of that. That's a 240 volt or 250 volt 10 amp um, relay switch. And just a little filter cap by the looks of things. Jeez, there's not a lot in these. A couple little capacitors. It's a three wire connection to that board. Ah! <coughs> It's using a, it's got a common ground, um, which goes to this board. There we go. And then you've got your battery or your um, power supply for this board. And then it's got a simple logic real, uh, logic output, which would go into this little cir this circuit down here. Which I would basically. Oh, I see. Ah, cause, yeah, because that's a, that's a uh, an optical isolator. So basically, this would output enough power to light the LED in this, which will open um, or allow current to flow through the other side, which would energize the coil in this relay, which would then close the contacts and allow power to come out the other side. Very snifty. So by rights, if I sandwich that board back together on this with a double A or a triple A or something like that, I should be able to get that clock to light up. Hmm. I'll give it a go. I'll just turn these wires up here. Now, I mean, if that output's just a low level, you could probably use it to turn a little beeper on. Um, you know, like a beep 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 sort of thing, um, or use it for random noises or random clocks or God knows what. It's kind of um, multi-purpose. A bit crowded in here. The sorting's not too good at the moment. See if we can get this to work. Oh. Uh, so that's your uh, power in. Let's power out to the display. It could be just a wee bit tricky to do, but get it, give it a go. Okay, we've got triple A battery. Negative. Oh. 
there. Not pressing down hard enough on the board though. There you go. Aha, it's a clock. Cool. I like that. Then you can just use the trigger output to turn things on and off. Fun stuff. Alright, thanks for watching. Turns out this bit here comes out too. Let me get rid of that. I'll be able to mount. Yeah, it's the neighbours. Kid's a bit of a whinger. The kitty winches a bit. Um, but those little screws go. Well, there's one. Excuse me, I'm trying to make a video. Thank you. Let's try on the other side of the bloody house. I wonder how many volts this would take. But pretty sure if you get it run right on three, you can just solder a lithium uh, button cell to it. Then again, I don't know how much power it uses, so. Oh. <coughs> And it's not a screw, there you go. Your uh, presence is now be required. Be back. <clears throat> I just remembered I had a AA battery holder here. I went and hunted it down. Put some this Mr. Insel tape. Okay. Just to stop any problems. Well, I'll play with this. There you go. Yeah, double A IKEA battery. These are cheap. So alkalines too, which means they last for bloody ever. If you can get them in <coughs> the battery holder. There you go. You have a clock. Don't know what to do with it. We've got a clock. <laughs> yeah. Now I just have to work out how to actually set it. But yeah, you, it, it's got on and auto and stuff. Hey. Here's Here's a thought. Get the multimeter out. Hmm. Set that to volts. You can see that. What I want to know this output here, if I stick the black one on the back of the battery. So on, yep. Um, so that turns it auto on off. So put that on the back of there. So the output is currently nothing. Nothing. Okay. Let's set that to on. So we get. There you go. Yeah, it's just a 1.1 1 .1 odd volt um, output. Now that'll stay on as long as the front says on. So while that's on, 
or off. Click on. Right. I'm falling off the pads. On, auto, off. Mad. How cool is that? Well, you learn something every day. And yeah, you can um, set these to random, <clears throat> so they randomly turn on and off. It's basically to emulate whether you're home or not. Um, time accuracy isn't too bad on these. Um, I mean, they may lose a couple of seconds every week or something like that, at the worst. Um, but generally speaking, they're not too bad. Um, they're used, or they were used in a couple of DVD kiosks around Australia for quite a long time. Um, for maintaining the uh, 3G connections. But they've uh, since upgraded the modems in those, so they were no longer required. Um, well, as you can see, this one was faulty anyway. Um, but I think we may have another use for it. See, you could use that output to um, trigger a signal in something like a, an automatic um, watering system or something with an Arduino or something like that, or some other sort of microcontroller. Pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gone now. Have a good one.